you are watching part two which is tip 707 of my four-part series on making a grinding jig for lathe cutter bits. Hello again it's Mr. Pete and this is part two of my four-part series on making this little jig that you can use to sharpen lathe cutter bits on small lathes such as South Bend, Logan and Atlas. So in part one I made the main block so go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it. And in this part two, I'm going to make these sleeves which have a square hole and have graduations on here. So the graduations will be shown, how to put the graduations will be shown in the next video because that is, warrants a standalone video. But how are you going to make square holes? So that's really what this video is pretty much about. So let's begin. For those of you that would like to make this little grinding jig, there are no actual blueprints for it. About a year ago, I had contact with a man out of state that agreed to do the blueprints and something happened, it fell through or he lost interest or something like that. I, I'm not really sure because I've lost contact with him. But at that time, I made a short video, like a 10 minute video that was private and sent to this man so that he would have some dimensions to make the blueprints. So what I'm going to do is make available to you that unlisted video and uh, you can take a look at it. That might help you if you need dimensions or to make some sketches. So here is the title for that and I'll put the uh, link down in the description. Here is the title to that unlisted video. Check it out. Click on the link. There are actually four of these sleeves that came in the original South Bend kit. 3 16 square, quarter inch square, 5 16 and 3 8 Now you don't need to make all of these. Just make one or two that uh, suit your needs. And of course the most popular ones are quarter probably and 5 16 And you can see that these high speed steel bits fit nicely in that square hole if you can keep them in there but I think we're most interested in this one which will hold quarter inch square bits. Well how are you going to make a square hole? Raise your hand if you have square brooches at home in four sizes. I didn't see a single hand go up so let's talk about alternate ways of doing it. Quite some time ago I made a video to show you how to make square holes and it took me a whole year to, to get back to this point but I'm going to show you that video if you haven't seen it or at least the link to it. But again these holes are broached. Now you can see the little nicks there in the corner which tells you that they're broached. Again, you won't be able to do that because you would need $600 worth of brooches in order to do this and that's not practical. So in that video, which I'm going to talk about in a second, I showed you how to make a square hole like this. Now that's slotted. The work was slotted like this and then filled by brazing or silver soldering and then and here's another example and that works quite good but it's rather difficult to do and uh, let me show you one more thing here if I can find it and here is a finished one that I made a year or two ago also two pieces but that is a very viable solution to doing this. You start by making a slot on the mill and then you fill it with scrap braise it and then machine it and you can't hardly see the the join part there so all right let me show you that video real quick so it might be helpful for you to watch this video and I'll put the link in the description and for some reason this video went viral and had over a million views I'm not sure why okay these sleeves in the 3 16 quarter, 
5 16ths and 3 8 size. They're called sleeves, and I bought these from Green Bay Manufacturing. I think McMaster Car has them also. So, for instance, the quarter inch, so in other words, we're buying our square holes. So, there's the quarter inch and the outside diameter right here is about 7 16 so we will drill and ream a 5 16 hole and either press fit this or hold it in with a Loctite and we got our square hole but let's start now by taking a piece of round stock putting it in the lathe and turning it down to this diameter and then we'll drill and ream the hole then we'll cut it off face it and in the next chapter or the next part of this video we will put the graduations on so it's really a rather complex piece when you think about it if you wish to buy some of these square hole sleeves here is your source I believe they also are available in McMaster car I made this cutaway some time ago and you can see that there'll be a hole drilled in here and tapped in a, a groove and an undercut. Well, this one isn't undercut, but looking at this side, you can see that we didn't really need to have the square hole go all the way through. I guess I got the wrong size there. It's 5 16, so that fits in there like that. This is simply clearance back here. But this is more or less what the South Bend ones look like with the clearance hole. Well, you can start with stock that is that size, 1.350 or approximately there, but where you're going to find stock that size. It's kind of a weird size. So I'm going to use one and a half inch stock. I've already faced both ends. Now I'll put it in the lathe and Turn it down to this diameter and this length, and I'll tell you what those dimensions are in a second. Okay, the main block is 1.890, so that these sleeves are the same length, or approximately the same length as the block. So I'll go ahead and lay that dimension off on this stock, and I'm ready to turn. Okay, here's the setup. The work is held in a three-jaw chuck. I've already drilled a center hole in the end just in case I need to support it with a center if there's a little vibration or chatter. And I have set my carriage stop for the exact length of that piece. I won't have to measure other than the diameter which is again I wrote it down here 0.931 Okay, let's do some turning. Okay, I'm almost down to diameter. I have six thousandths to go on my finishing pass. Perfect. And now a little bit of a chamfer on the end. Well, I'm not crazy about that finish that I got there. Well, next I'm going to square off this shoulder just a little bit and undercut it using this cutoff tool. Now I need to turn down the major diameter there so that it is the same as this, which is, well, I got one and three eighths on there, but I'm going to make it 1.356. Well, we're still not done here. The next thing I want to do is to put this groove 
in the sleeve. But you can see that they put uh, a V-groove. Now that's kind of difficult to do when you're going to get a lot of chatter, so I'm just going to make a flat groove with a cutoff tool. And the distance is exactly one inch from the flange right here to the center of it. And I'm going to use a dog point screw like that. That's a fine one simply because that's what I got. So we don't want a, the set screw to make a mark on this piece such that it's hard to get in and out of the block. So it doesn't need to be very deep, perhaps a sixteenth of an inch deep. So let's cut. Whatever you do, do not take your work out of the chuck until all of these different steps have been made. Now this sleeve here, for a quarter inch square, is 7 16 diameter, that is 7 16 OD. So I'm going to ream 7 16 I've already center drilled, but first I will drill this size, which is one size under 7 16 And how deep am I going to go? just a little bit past into the rusty area here and then I'll cut this off. And finally, I'm ready to take it out of the chuck, and I'll take it to the bandsaw, cut it off, and then reverse it, hold it by this diameter, reverse it, and face this end to the correct length. Then I'm ready to press in the sleeve. Okay, I just sawed this off, and I much prefer sawing over struggling with a cutoff tool. That only took about two minutes with a good sharp blade. So now I'll put it back in the three jaw chuck like this and face this off such that I have a head on it that's you know, around 320. Not too critical. I probably should make it even a little bit longer so there's plenty of room for the embossing. But you can see there are really a lot of steps to making one of these, isn't there? Now, if, uh, if you had a brooch at this point, you would have drilled it the correct size and it's ready to brooch. But, as I said, we're going to use these square holes. Notice that the sleeve here is just a little bit shorter. This sleeve is shorter than this, which is not a problem at all. So I will press in from this end, and this is going to be a real good fit. It starts, but that's about as far as, well, take it back. It'll go, I can push it in, yeah. But I don't really want it in there yet, so I can knock that back out. And on final assembly, I'll use just a couple drops of Loctite on that. But remember that on this piece, there are still two holes to be drilled, and I'm not ready to drill them yet because I want this little threaded hole to align with this groove. The other hole, which I have to drill there, holds the square tool bit in there, and I'm not quite ready for that either because that has to line up and be oriented with the flat. So we'll do that a little bit later, and that's the job for the milling machine. So there it is. Just a couple more minor operations here, as I just said. But that concludes this video, part two. So in part three, I'm going to show you how to emboss or engrave the graduations. And we'll be using the milling machine and the spin index for that, or the dividing head, a lot of different ways of doing it. 
you may not even want to do this because just one or two index marks might be sufficient for using this to actually grind a tool bit. Well anyway, that's the end of this. Be sure and watch part three and part four when available. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now.